This is why I love the internet. The Kamala Harris parody ad that made ripples across the internet a few weeks ago finally has a sequel, and I think it's going to ruffle even more feathers this time. And why? Well, for one, the creator, Mr. Reagan, baked in some cold truths about the Kamala campaign that are harder to state in plain words, and that's why it's the perfect place for us to take a deep dive into the dynamics around the current Democratic ticket. That's also some important surveys and polling out recently that we have to talk about. So subscribe to the channel for more discussions like this. And let's get into it. Recently in a campaign stop in Nevada, I proposed my new totally original idea. No tax on tips. And eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Now I want to tell you about some of my other totally original ideas that I'll roll out starting on day one. Because of crooked Joe Biden, we have an immigration crisis. But let's call it what it is. It's an invasion. And I propose a totally new solution. I will build a wall. Nobody builds walls better than me. I will build a great wall on our southern border and I'll have Mexico pay for it. This is my idea, 100% my own personal idea. And another original idea of mine on day one, the largest mass deportation in the history of our country. Totally original idea of mine. And another totally original idea, I'm going to strengthen our military. Joe Biden made our military weak, but I will make our military strong again. On day one, I will totally eliminate DEI. We will terminate every diversity, equity, and inclusion program. Honestly, can you really blame someone for coming up with this parody? We're literally less than 70 days from the election and hardly anyone from the Democratic ticket has sat down for a long form interview or town hall meeting to lay out their policy positions in any detail. It's a result of wanting to sit on the fence until the last minute and jump on the bandwagon of whatever is popular. By the way, that part about the Kamala campaign stealing one important policy position is actually true because the decision to remove tax on tips for service workers was originally proposed by Donald Trump at the Republican National Convention a month ago. At the center of our plan for economic relief, are massive tax cuts for workers that include something else that's turned out to be very popular, actually. Here it's very popular, this building and all those hotels that I saw that are so nice. I'm staying in a nice one. It's called No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. No tax on tips. Not just that, if you look at the websites of the current Trump and Harris campaigns, you realize that only one of them even has a section of policy positions clearly laid out, while the Kamala Harris website lacks any such list of proposals and policy positions. And yet for some reason, this isn't being talked about as much as it should be, apart from the people online, including the parody you just saw. Watch the second half of the ad, and because there's another kernel of truth I want you to explore. We all know Washington, D.C. is totally corrupt. It's a corrupt swamp. So I'm going to do something no one else has ever thought to do. When I'm president, I'm going to drain the swamp. Again, this is totally my idea, 100% original. I'm going to open up a bribery investigation on crooked Joe Biden because he belongs in prison. Let's drain the swamp. Totally my idea. Only I can fix the economy, build the wall, end the war in Ukraine, and eliminate tax on tips. These are all my ideas, 100% original. And remember when I got shot in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I'm basically an American hero. That really happened to me, for real. Paris Walls 2024. Let's make America great again. Remember how riled up some people got when Elon Musk tweeted a similar parody ad a few weeks ago to the point that even Gavin Newsom came after him? It's a really interesting window into how humor and parody can work as a catalyst for the conversations that no one is willing to have in the political domain. That seems true of the fact that Kamala Harris can remain as uncommitted as she is from a policy perspective while taking much of her base along for a ride filled with a petty, idealistic identity politics and empty promises. That's not good for the political culture at large, and neither is it for her own campaign. According to the latest polls in August, more than 49% of Americans disapprove of Kamala Harris's presidency, and perhaps another significant percentage hardly even knows what she stands for. Using race and gender-based identities in politics doesn't take you anywhere productive and that goes for both sides of the political spectrum. But it's only so long before she has to answer the tough questions instead of simply piling on the other side. For example, many commentators and pundits have been pointing out something that should be obvious. Even if she's giving any positions or promise to her voters, why doesn't she do it now? It's a case of someone telling a political rally of all the great things that would do if they were voted into the White House, and then at the end of the rally goes back to the White House. It is that subtle disconnect that strikes a lot of people to that kind of political disillusionment, which ultimately isn't great for the health of the democracy. For example, here's one clip doing rounds of Kamala Harris giving a confusing and incoherent answer about her proposal for a child tax credit and $25,000 down payment, 
for new homeowners that would dent the federal budget by about $1.7 trillion. Note the number of times she says return on investment in the span of less than a minute while not really saying anything at all. You unveiled your effort from economic policies last week. Yeah. Can you explain how you're going to pay for those? And can you give us a sense of what other policies you want to unveil going forward? Sure. Well, I mean, you just look at it in terms of what we are talking about, for example, around children and the child tax credit and extending the EITC. That is it's at $6,000 for the first year of a child's life. The return on that investment in terms of what that will do and what it will pay for will be tremendous. We've seen it when we did it the first year of our administration. We reduced, we reduced child poverty by over 50%. So that's a lot of the work. And then what we're doing in terms of the tax credits, we know that there's a great return on that investment. When we increase home ownership in America, what that means in terms of increasing the tax base and up to measure property tax base, what that does to fund schools, again, return on investment. I think it's a mistake for any person who talks about public policy to not critically evaluate how you measure the return on investment. None of that is a good look for the campaign in front of the voters, and it's hard to imagine that not being a dent on her base as the world becomes more volatile than ever, a degree of basic clarity will become even more indispensable. But let me know in the comments what you think about the current political dynamic, because there is certainly going to be a lot of back and forth as we speed toward November.